4 of 2022, and welcome to everyone's uh, fire, today's fireside chat on music and NFTs. So in the past couple of years, we have seen a huge growth in the NFT space for digital artists around the world. But in today's topic, we want to have a conversation about the adoption, innovation, the growth opportunities for musicians in the Web3 space with NFTs. Um, today in today in Goss Fireside Chat, we are, we are supposed to have two amazing guests, but right now we have one. We have Losi. Losi is a Colombian singer, songwriter, entrepreneur, and Web3 enthusiast. She started to learn and invest in Web3 in December 2021. Never since then, she fell in love with the world of crypto and NFTs. Losi is, currently, is currently a collab manager for projects in the space, a Web3 advisor, and recently started an NFT accelerated program at Nifty Music Academy, which she is super excited about. So, Losi, welcome to the stage, and thank you so much for being here. Hello, Rob, and thank you. Thank you for that introduction. Um, as, as you said, yes, I'm a Colombian singer and songwriter and also a Web3 enthusiast. I'm super excited to be here to talk about um, all things Web3 and music, which are both my passions. So, yeah, very, very excited. Awesome. Um, again, uh, and I know you're active. I, I caught your Twitter and everything you're doing. I just want to take a step <laughs> back and get a little bit more context with you. I'm going to go ahead and assume that music's been a part of your life a little bit longer than Web3. So can you just give us a little maybe context on, on you as an artist? For sure. So it's it's interesting because for me, music, as I said, has has always been a passion of mine. Growing up, I used to dream of, of being a superstar, of, of singing in big stages and making music. But everyone around me always told me, oh, like those are little girl dreams. That's that's not a real job, not a real career. And, and for a long time, I believed it, especially because when I growing up, I was very good in school. So everyone was like, no, you have to go. I, I, I lived in Colombia, but everyone was like, you have to go study in the U.S. Um, so that's the path I, I actually uh, carved for myself. And I always made myself believe that music was just this um, hobby that would never be a career and that I would just never, never pursue it. And I ended up going to Wharton um, School of Business in Philadelphia. But then, um, because of some crazy turn of events, I had to put a pause on my education. And simultaneously, the, pandem the pandemic hit. So I was back home, and, and the pandemic was happening. So we were all like locked down, and, and that got me like thinking, and, and it moved a lot of um, energies for me and made me question a lot of things. And that's when I reconnected back to music and and i started like actually making music professionally and and writing more and and just decided that i wanted to give this a chance meaning this music and that i didn't want to grow up older and, and then look back and, and just always stay with that little thing in my heart of of like because I was still like dreaming of that, you know, like I, sure, I yeah. even when I was in university and, and everything, I was like, I went to bed thinking of, of music and, and I always like kept my song, like my, my little journal of my songs that I had written, but I never like actually like produced them. But I started doing that at the, in the pandemic. So I released my first song in uh, July of 2021. So a, a little bit more than a year ago. And I and I got into Web three in December, so that was like it was very like hand in hand, um, in terms of like professionally producing music and getting into Web three. But I'm sorry, I'm just go. I'm just talking too much of you guys. No, have, like, no, oh, please, this is this is great. <laughs> okay, so then uh, the the funny thing also is that when I joined Web three, never did I like did I think I was gonna be able to put these two together, like music and and NFTs and um, I, 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 I honestly joined Web3 just because I was seeing people like making so much money out of this. And I was like, there's no way I'm going to stay out of this wave. <laughs> there's no way I'm staying out of the party. <laughs> <laughs> like, so many people are uh, making millions and thousands of dollars. And I'm just like, th th this is not going to be me a few years down the line. But when I joined the Web3 space, I just discovered this 
crazy world and community and and people that I I never I I I thought I was gonna like come in and just like make money and that would be it, you know. But when when you come to this world and you realize there's just so much more than trading JPEGs and and there's like people behind it, there's innovation, there's creativity, there's there's just so many good things that that it made me like fall in love and then I was like I want to be here I want to continue building in this space like I definitely it, they it convinced me that it was that it is the future and and I'm, I've always been very forward thinking and and very uh technology oriented I, I I'm very curious in terms of of like what drives our future and and innovation so this was like perfect for me in, in terms of of what I love and and so I as, as I started kind of like meeting people here and just like learning more and and getting into different communities I the first like music web3 platform I came across was Audius and so that that was like the first community I joined I, I opened my profile and then the rest is history <laughs> from then on i just started uh like meeting more people and you know it just becomes like a snowball effect it, it's just course. like one thing leads to the other and it's... the other and and now here we are <laughs> of course and we're definitely gonna get into audience so just just to take a little step back so you didn't have any like when you were going to philadelphia you didn't have musical business aspirations you just went to business school or was you know, that kind of inkling of wanting to play a part in the music industry in, in your mind when you enroll in business school? No, not at all. So I, I've always been also very entrepreneurial. It's not like... Gotcha, okay, gotcha. So when, when, I, when I was in, in business school, it's not like I was unhappy. At all. Like, I, I love I love learning. I'm, as I said, I'm very curious and, and I love business. But in terms of, like, business music, I never thought of it that way because I've always thought of myself as the artist. Like... And and so I was like there just I was studying business but I would always be thinking of of my music. Like I would whenever I had time, you know, I would I would always be writing. I would be music for me has been it is is part of everything in my life and and so I've always been connected to music. I just had never pursued it professionally because of everyone around me just telling me and and when, when so many people tell you, you start believing it yourself, you know? It was hard at first to, like, shut out, like, shut out all of those voices and be like, sometimes you just got to follow what your, your intuition and, and your heart is, is telling you. Of, of course, and that's, that's for anything. Artists, uh, you know, entrepreneurs, people leaving traditional, you know, lines of work to start their own business, athletes, you know, the whole deal. So, you know, I commend you for doing that. that that's, that's really amazing. And especially, you know, you. Just, take, just taking that pivot. Um, it's so funny how, how the pandemic kind of just shook people's plans up. Um, and, you yeah. know, usually for the better. So it sounds like you, you kind of found your way here. So um, before we get into really the, the nitty gritty of, of um, you know, audience and, you know, music and NFTs, how before you kind of got wind of that what were like what were your plans as an artist i felt like how to how to do this how to make a career of doing this before finding web3 exactly so honestly my plan uh, so i've always been very like you your mind is your own limit so i i've never thought of like limits but i i was just like I'm I'm gonna I wasn't thinking of like this is how it's gonna happen, but I was just doing like my thing and just reaching out to people and 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 connecting and and just thinking in my mind I was like I'm gonna keep obviously okay, so at first it was like I'm gonna go the traditional web two route. So I was like super focused on on trying to like get my songs to producers so i would spend my time like literally browsing the web like emails trying to find like producers and and people from like uh big uh web two companies like um record labels and and just i was i thought I, I was gonna have to have someone um sign me to the record label and then start going from there you know so You're that right. was kind of my plan like release songs put out content and and 
just like you know that phrase that is like be so loud they can't ignore you like i wanted to to like at some point do enough to like make them notice me um i wasn't sure how but i just knew that <laughs> if i would kept working hard i would eventually get there uh but believe me at times i was obviously like super lost and there were days where i was just like this is probably i should have listened to my parents <laughs> um of course and, and like it's yeah. it's a huge game you know there's thousands or thousands and thousands of people trying to to make it um as a musician as a, as an artist as a rapper you know whatever the case may be and there's only so many there's only so much attention for these gatekeepers of these exactly. of these labels and it, it's getting their attention and then being what they want at that moment and y- there's just so many variables to to get on you know totally. from, from that like MTV era, I know we're going back a little bit further back than Web mm-hmm. Two, but you know there's only so many people that made it onto MTV and actually made a, a career. So you're creating content. I know you're on Instagram, TikTok. You're putting out TikToks, Instagram, and all that. Is there anything that we should know that out there in Web Two that you weren't doing, or, or sorry, that you were doing in addition to that? Um, honestly, besides, yeah, putting out content, I was just like trying to learn as much as I could from, from people already in the industry. So I would literally reach out to, I I would think like, who is the closest person I know that knows about this? And, and so what, like, as I said, it's funny because like one thing leads to the other and, and it's like. Sometimes you, like for me, I went, before releasing my first song, I was super scared and nervous, you know, like what if like nobody hears it? What if like it's not, it's not perfect. But I remember I had, I had this uh, one time, one boss I, that told me like, it's better to like, re- like just do it. Like literally just release it, even if it's not perfect. Because if you never release it, then nobody's going to know and, and less things are going to happen. And that was so true because when I released my first song, like, I got contacted by this producer who who's a Colombian producer. And so he called me in and, and he called me into his studio. We made a song. He taught me so much. Then uh, see, I found another friend who, well, not a friend, but like a, an acquaintance who now became my friend because he was also producing music. So he reached out and he was like, oh, I'm so glad you're doing this. So he told me about like his journey. So I also learned from like what he's been doing. So, you know, I was just like trying to learn as much as I could and, and just call people and, and I would spend like hours literally just talking about their, like learning from their experiences, learning from, from what they, they've had been through and, and just trying to, to use that to my advantage for, for building my career and my brand as an artist. And so that was basically what I was doing in, in Web2 in, in relation to my music. And then... I thank God found this wonderful Web3 world. <laughs> and yeah, that's a great segue. Uh, first of all, it sounds like you're amazing for just doing that because so many people, you know, do not look to the people that have already done what they want to do for advice. Uh, so, so being humble and not thinking that you have all the answers and, you know, eating that humble pie, as we say, and, and <laughs> just at f- reaching out to people that have done it and be like, hey, talk to me like how'd you how'd you do this thing uh, so, <laughs> yeah. so hats off to you for that web three you know take us to the time where you first heard nfts or you put the two and two together like oh like i can and okay. okay so the first as, as i going back to like my point on i'm very curious so i'm always like looking on like what's the next thing and i'm reading and so the first 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 time i heard about um nfts was during the pandemic like the early early stages and and i remember seeing like a, a headline of like this tweet i think it was like the first tweet being sold as an nft for like an outrageous amount of money and I was like, what the hell is an NFT? So I, I started reading. And to be honest, I, I, after like reading like several articles, I still could not grasp the content, like what it was fully. But I remember like going and making my, kind of my like, uh, 
my profile on Mintable. It was like at that at the time it was Mintable, like the platform I found. And I made my profile, I made everything. And my sister, she is a she's very creative too, but she's more like artistic in like she she paints, she's a, a designer. And so I told her like um Valen, her name is Valentina. So I was like Valen we can't sell your, your paintings as pictures and NFTs. <laughs> and so we literally took pictures of our paintings and put them on Mintable. That's amazing. Uh, and then, but we literally, like, obviously they did not sell for any, they're probably still listed there, but I, I, I just listed that listed them there. And I, and I left, like, I completely forgot about that until like December of 2021 when I was, I'm a huge YouTuber. I love to like learn on YouTube. And, and I was like, Watching a video when when this video came up of Noah Kagan Kagan I don't know how to pronounce his last name yeah and he was like interviewing and crypto millionaires like how to invest your first a thousand on on crypto <laughs> and so I watched this video and I'm like there is no way I cannot like if these guys can do it I can do it too so I literally like from that video onwards I, I i was just spending hours and hours just like reading i i that's when i like made my i opened my metamask like actually bought some crypto started like uh joining discord um you just got, and, and joining just you got your hands dirty in the space yeah yeah but I, at, at first i was just spending hours and hours like just reading watching more videos like what is eth what is bitcoin what is solana just videos explaining what what the blockchain was and just trying to wrap my head around it because I, I could not if like i could if i could not understand it i would not feel safe like just putting my money there you know and so because i i was at some point i was like the people who thought like this was all a huge ponzi scheme sure. <laughs> until i i fully understood it you know uh and you know there's a lot of those people still out there and you know, to their point, a lot of them are, you know, there are a lot of scams no, for sure. in yeah. there. And, and, you know, and we, we talk a, a lot about that in this ecosystem, um, you know, just, just for contextualization, what we are doing here at GOSS is we have a, uh, we're building and launching next month, a, a layer, a curated layer one blockchain to really um, minimize um, and get out all of the scams and all, all of the, the bad things that people are, uh, you know, used to hearing about and reading about in uh, decentralized platforms. So, um, you know, one of the big things that we're going to attract is is brands, influencers, musicians, artists um, that want to have a safer ecosystem to, you know, launch launch an, a project on and have their audience come to a place where it's not going to be, uh, you know, scam city. So no, for sure. So that that is a huge part of it. Now, getting back to your onboarding journey. And, you know, you said you had that entrepreneur spirit. Did you, and I know you're taking pictures <laughs> of the paintings, which is amazing. Um, <laughs> but did you get, you know, a lot of people that got onboarded at that time, which is a lot of people, uh, you know, with, with the the Jack Dorsey tweet you're talking about. And I think it was like two, it was definitely two something million. <laughs> it like was it was an incredible amount. I just remember Keep just being blown away that and then you know the people 69 million sale like it, it was crazy um did you did you get into the the mindset of like oh i'm just gonna buy and flip nfts or did you immediately connect to the dots like i'm gonna make music using nfts oh no yeah so at back when we did the first like when we minted those my sister's pictures I, I literally minted the, minted them and then completely forgot about, like, I, I was not going to, like, I was just like, oh, if someone buys it, like, yes, but I'm not putting my money in there. <laughs> like, I'm not, I don't feel safe just, like, buying these JPEGs. Uh, so, and I didn't understand the ecosystem, so I, I forgot about it. But then when I joined for the second time, um, uh, like, December, at first, I, complete, I, I, I did not think at all that I was going to, like, merge these two until... So, when, when the first community I joined was the... The first NFT I minted was an in-betweener. I don't know if you've heard of that project. I don't think uh, so. So, it's like the... 
it was the, a collection made by the designer of Justin Bieber's brand, like Drew House. Okay. So, so that is, his designer made a collection, and that was the first NFT I minted. And maybe because it was associated with Ju Justin Bieber or something, it attracted like the community is made up of a lot of of people who are in the music business, who are in the art like scene. Sure, that makes sense. So exactly. So I I I was very like into that community. I literally that's where I started meeting people, and I and I met so many like artists. I even made like one of my songs that I have out right now is made by with me and a guy that I met there that he has now become like one of my best friends and, and I literally have never seen him in my life like IRL. We completely made this song like bouncing off ideas uh, via like internet and and I recorded here from Colombia. He recorded, he's, in, he's from Seattle, so he recorded from Seattle. And that's when it kind of like, that that sparked in me something. I was like, Hmm, there's people in here that, that are also making music and this is so cool. Like I can I can connect with people who are in the industry who who like are not here in Colombia and who who like have so much like knowledge and also like love music and so it I was just like literally just having the time of my life because it, it was also fun. It is still so fun, like just getting to talk to people and, and do something that you love and so that's where I started like thinking like, hmm, I want to do this. But I still thought like I first want to learn more about this space, like how you do it. Because at first I, I didn't even know like how would I release my music as an NFT or or like if it was possible at all. So I was just like thinking it at that point. Uh, but then I came across Audius and I was like, wow, there's like there's a there's a um, um, a business market for this. Like there, there's a lot of people in audios there's some some artists already there like famous big names and and i started getting into that community and then it, sorry, sorry i don't want to i don't mean to cut you off but just for um just for context could you explain to to everyone what audios is what kind of a platform yes for sure so i think of audios as the Spotify for Web3. <laughs> so Audios is, is basically a, a streaming platform, just like Spotify. You can upload your song. But it it has two key differences. One, it takes away the middleman. So on Spotify, if as an artist you want to upload a song, it has to be through a third party. There's a lot. I use, for instance, one that is called DistroKid. So I first upload my song. It has to be at least... Uh, four weeks in advance or so if i want to release a song in in four weeks i need to release it sorry if i want to release a song let's say in in november i need to literally upload it now and then they send it to spotify who spotify puts it then in my in my profile but it's for audience you can literally just go to your profile click upload wav or mp3 Put the name, description, the mood, whatever you want to call your song, and bam, you upload it in a matter of seconds. It's on the web. Everyone can stream it. Super easy, super cool. So first, that it takes away that that middleman, and second, it has the web three aspect of they have a token, and it's called audio, and you can earn audio currently either by buying it. It's it's on the Solana blockchain, I believe. And, and so you can either earn audio by buying it, participating in the, they, they, they host contests like for artists, like remix contests, or by participating in community events, or by, oh, you can also, so as a, as a listener or as an artist, whatever, you can tip artists. So if you find a profile and you love the, their music, you can send them audio like as a form of tipping. And... And yeah, so it has that, that like token aspect. At one point, the like at the very top of the bull market, <laughs> audio like one audio was worth like uh, four four dollars. Right now, is is obviously super devaluated. It's like point, <laughs> I think it's point three or something. Um, mm -hmm. But still, That's, like sounds about right. Yeah, everything is super devaluated. Obviously, right now. Um, because of of the bear, but but yeah, that's basically what Audios is. It's kind of like a streaming platform in in Web three. 
that um thank you because that i think that's a very uh very tight description and articulate so you say take away the middleman like isn't this and going back to what we were talking about before this is kind of what every artist would want right why wouldn't why wouldn't an artist want to not pay a huge chunk of their you know royalties to a you know to a, a suit at a record label why not just no, do it this way exactly totally that's one of the biggest things in terms of like web3 and what it enables for artists is just like i just feel like historically the the music industry uh, as many other industries have been and are controlled by by very few powerful people who who like because they've had the money they they think that they can control um everything and so of course as as people we 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 never stop to question until someone comes along and it's like i'm gonna disrupt this i'm gonna change the way things have been and and so this something i believe is is web3 you know and and obviously at first there's gonna be a lot of a lot of friction and a lot of setback from primarily the bigger industries who obviously will not be benefiting from this and also people who are skeptic and who have a hard time just um shifting their their paradigms and so this is what is happening right now there's just like a lot of people who think that web3 is this huge fake um scam that has come along and and that is never going to make it but then there's the people who are the visionaries and who are probably tired of of things just being the same old way and are like there has to be another way because it's not it's like it doesn't make sense that there's just like the artists who are making the music and who are putting their time and effort are not getting the like the financial reimbursement from for their craft and for their art and and then these huge people behind suits and and corporations get to take the money that they have not like really worked for and i'm not against like them making money it's just the disproportionate amount of inequality in terms of distribution like who gets what and 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 who gets the attention and who gets the placements and the money you know and in web3 it's more like the artist is in charge and the community also gets to decide like who they want to support and and how they want to support them it's like directly um yeah it's like directly to the artist i love that and yeah it's it's the market that gets to decide and not not some arbitrary gatekeeper yeah, um totally so you know, speaking of community, you know, like you said, you're you've been building in Web two. You know, you have a, a TikTok following, Instagram following. Have you, um, you know, have you, your audience have they supported you on this new platform? Have you have you been able to convert any over? So to be completely honest, I haven't even tried to convert. I'm I'm a huge believer that people will find their way. Like, I don't like pushing things on anyone. Like, like if I decide to do something, I do it because I want to do it because I'm genuinely curious, but I will never like push or, or try to get someone. Like if they approach me and they ask me, I'm with all the love in the world, I'll explain and I'll tell them about my journey and I'll, and I'll let them know what I'm doing in Web3. But I'm not the type of person to like try to shove it down people's throats. Like, come to Web3, or like, this is what I'm doing in Web3. I just wanted to do it organically. And I also think that there's a lot of, as I said, like, there's a lot of pushback from people in Web2, and especially because there's so many celebrities that have been associated with, like, scams in, in Web3 that I just think that if, if as an artist, or like, that I'm trying to build my brand as an artist, if I try to push this Web3 thing to my Web2 um, following, they might just see it as a as a cash grab or like a scam. Whereas the community of building Web3, they were already in Web3 by themselves, not because of my music or the music. We found each other in Web3. Like they already know what Web3 is, what a cash grab is. They know my intentions. They, we've grown together with, like, you know, like I've been here since December. I don't plan on going anywhere. And so 
that's the community I, I want to nurture here in, in Web3. And then if someone from Web2 comes and, and like is curious about what I'm doing in Web3, I'm super happy to tell them. I've, I've had friends from, from Web2 ask me and I've, and I've talked to them. I've told them about what I'm doing. They're super interested. They love it. They're kind of scared still <laughs> to get in. Uh, but yeah, so ba- I, I basically have not even like tried to onboard my Web2 community into Web3, honestly. That's... I just tried to keep it as two things separate. That's amazing. And, you know, I, whenever I interview someone, I tend to do my homework before and she's not bullshitting guys. I, I checked out your TikTok. There's no, no video where you say, Hey, check out my audience link, no right hooks anywhere to be found. So kudos to you for that. That's amazing. Um, Thank you. So amazing. Amazing. So just for, you know, anyone listening for the first time hearing about this on audience, it's not just, you know, um, up and coming singer songwriters. I know there's Nas. I know Steve Aoki is a part of it. Uh, Chain Smokers, Katy Perry. So there's some real artists. Like, so do you do you envision this getting this particular platform getting a lot more popular as we as we move on into the upcoming months, years, or are there other players out there similar to this that are going to compete? What's your thoughts on so- that? Yeah, so in terms of audience, I'm super bullish on audience. I, by the way, I do not get paid by audience. I'm not sponsored or anything. No, I, I'm I just, know, and I'm, I'm totally putting you on the spot. I know that, so I appreciate it. I'm, su- <laughs> I'm super bullish on audience because of one, I, 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 as I said, like he was the first community I joined, and and to this day, I'm part of that community. I, I know like a lot of the, like the people who who manage the platform the um, the leaders per se or the face of, of the platform and, and I know that they, they're building something to last and and they're always like bringing new ideas to engage the community to incentivize people to be on the platform uh, the, their discord is super active like there's people every day that I like the faces you recognize I go in there and, and, and it's always like great vibes and, and just artists trying to make music, have fun. I've connected with so many cool people. And so I definitely see Audios being a huge player, if not one of the, the biggest players in the music Web3 aspect. The interesting thing is that they're not, right now they're not doing anything with NFTs. So they're literally just focused on, on being like a Web3 streaming mm-hmm. um, platform. They do not have any integration with NFTs right now or like, like, artists launching their songs as nfts nothing like that it's just like artists uploading their music earning the audio token um creating playlists even you know tipping other artists creating those remix contests that they're famous for but that's it there's other players uh like sound xyc like catalog like um like blouse um i forget the name Okay, Blau's platform. Uh, okay, anyways. Yeah, no. <laughs> These platforms are right. into like Web3 NFTs. Sorry, music NFTs. Um, so I think like these three platforms, like Sound, Blau's platform, and, and Catalog are three huge players right now. They're, they're definitely launching artists and, and their songs as NFTs. They're, they have different approaches, obviously. For instance, Blau's platform is more of like literally the royalty distribution like um, idea, which is like you buy an NFT as a, a, a song and then you get to like benefit from the royalties. But for that, I definitely think that's more for like bigger artists like who want to get in, who already have like a huge web to following and have sure. millions of streams on spotify because then it will be literally pennies that you will be getting <laughs> there's no upside even an artist it doesn't have millions and millions of of streams um and then there's sound for instance which is a very famous music web3 platform which in which like artists can mint their songs and and then there's collectors who buy their songs and and then each each artist or musician gets to decide what kind of 
like perks or utility they assign to that NFT and to to the, their community. Yeah, that's that's the the component I think is that's going to be the real the real asterisk, the real thing that makes projects special and you know stand out communities. Um, just the added value. Uh-huh. That an artist totally. put on it. Um, totally. And by the way, just <laughs> Royal is the is the platform. Royal is is Lau's pr- platform. Got yeah. And I know yeah. There's there's a, there's a bunch, and it's gonna be interesting to kind of keep a pulse on that space and to see um, you know what happens, and you know as well as you know blockchains like us. Uh, you know it's uh, maybe this is. I'm just thinking out loud here. Maybe. Uh, you know, you can chime in, but I'm thinking about what the sweet spot is in terms of an audience or following for someone to kind of create their own NFT project to really convert. And I know we just mentioned that it's the value that you put attached to it, right? Um, you know, this is this is kind of not just a, a transactional thing when it comes to rewarding your community and having them support you in your early days, putting out songs, putting out an album. But I wonder if there's, you know, going to be a spot where it's like, you know, if you have X amount of, you know, loyal followers, then maybe you should launch your own project on, you know, on a dedicated blockchain, or maybe you should go onto something like Audius or, or Royal. So that, that's going to be interesting to see. Totally. Get deeper into this. Totally, and and I definitely believe it's just like sometimes it's just a trial and error. You know, you you learn from your mistakes. You learn from from obviously also talking and and learning from other people's mistakes. But in the end, there's right now there's no like right way to do it or like a a formula that works one size fits all. You know, in especially in Web three, that everything is so new that every day. Is changing every day. New platforms are being created every day. New people are coming in the space. You have to educate them. You have to kind of nurture your community. So I definitely think there's no right way to do it, and and it's just about just going and trying one way that you think is right, and then if that doesn't work out, then thank God you can try in another way. Of course, not trying to like scam or or anything, but it's like. If you see that your community maybe didn't respond to your first draw, like you, you can ask yourself, like, what, what am I doing wrong? You know, what, what did I not price correctly, or did I just didn't let my followers know, or am I lacking in in some aspect? Because I, I just think that, well, right now it's it's all about experimentation and about just trying to, trying your best and and, and learning. Absolutely. And, you know, pretty much everything you've done, you know, ask people that are doing it, you know, how, what they did, how you could do better at learning from your mistakes and just keeping that in the positive mindset that, that you have. Um, I love that. So I, I wanted to, to plug our Q&A board. Uh, if you guys want to ask any questions to, to Losi, we could, we could do that as we get into our, our final stages here. Um, you know what? What is what is one question on your mind? Or I don't know if I want questions the right word. What is the kind of obstacles you're looking at right now, or something you're looking to tweak as you kind of build up your presence in Web three um, as a musician? I think for me, one of actually, I was thinking that today alone, like, how can I be unique? Like, how can I differentiate? from from all these drops and and like artists that are that are dropping their songs as as nfts and as music like i want to find something that is unique and that stands out and that is different and so i've just been like thinking and and just trying to to find a way that i don't know i just wanna wanna do something special for this drop um and and just obviously also like how I can benefit my community from this because I like they're helping me and supporting me and and I like my biggest dream is to also be able to support them in some way and just like make this be a a two-way street 
like beneficial uh, project and, and relationship for, for all of us. And so I'm just like, those are the two biggest things, like just trying to find the way of really giving true value and utility to my community and then just doing something special and, and unique, which I'm, I'm still <laughs> meditating on, on what is it that and I, that's, I want to do. <laughs> I'm sure that's a, a fluid, a fluid um, evolving process yeah, answer slash sure. process yeah sure. and I, you know we we talked about some of those big names and I'm, I'm not saying that they're they don't have good intentions or anything but i think the biggest people that are going to pop out of this are people like like yourself that are just coming up and building their community and want to give back on a level that's more to the early supporters uh th- that's more magnified than someone that already has a li- you know, a pretty legitimate following that's comfortable, that's not as um, as eager to give back. And I, I hope that's not coming off the wrong way. I just think that people that need to be get more creative um, are going to do so by rewarding their fans and giving them giving them even more value than someone that's like a like a Nas or a Snoop or Chain Smokers. Th- does that make sense? Yeah. No, totally. And and. And I think that obviously as, as, as those bigger artists, like, like they, they, they were born per se in a different era, you know, and in a different time when, when this wasn't available. So that may be not native to them, but as an artist who I, I consider myself like music and web three came very, very hand in hand to me. Um, so I, I, I consider myself like a web three artist and, and at the core of Web3 um, is community, you know? Like, that's literally what makes this different from any other technology or, or like, um, yeah, new, new, new platform that, that are coming out. Like, it's just the power of the community and, and the, what it facilitates. So, and I think that music is, is one of the biggest um, aspects of a community, you know? Like, people gravitate towards a common goal or interest in a community and and music is is a huge like driver of of that so like if i can find a group of people that enjoy my music that that vibe with it that connect with it that that love it then that that to me is super special and and i want to connect with them too you know because music is part of me so it's like they're connecting with me so i think that that's really cool that's that's such a good point and makes so much sense. And now, now that you're literally saying that I'm thinking about, I'm a huge Dave Matthews band fan. Like it was just since I was a really little kid. And if I see someone with a Dave Matthews t-shirt or like a fire dancer sticker on their car, like I just find myself talking to them for 20 minutes. Um, yeah, there, is, sure, yeah. there is that connection and like, wow, I'm really having a moment here. You're so right. Uh, it just, <laughs> it's really, it's real connected community. Uh, wow. Amazing. So Alex, I know usually we have a, um, a a Q and a portion. I know this has pretty much been a whole Q and a portion. Um, and thanks for being such a good sport and being the only one on, uh, you've been phenomenal, but, uh, we have some questions from, uh, from the chat. So Alex, I don't know if you wanted to dive in and start firing off to, to Losi. Yeah, of course. So, and anyone um, else feel free to, to, to um, jump in with a question in the chat. So one of the questions that I have is like, what are some of the pros of con- pros and cons of launching on Audius in comparison to something like Spotify? Um, I mean, in comparison to something like SoundCloud. I know that you mentioned on for Spotify, it takes a lot longer to launch. Saying, I think you were saying how it takes maybe four weeks or a month in advance to launch a song. And there's a lot of vetting process in order to get through that. But there's also something like SoundCloud. And I think... What do you think are the pros and cons? Say, if I were to make if I were to make music to launch an audience in, instead of a SoundCloud or anywhere else. Yes, for sure, for sure. So I think the biggest like it in it, it's not more like a pro and con, but more of like where you're at in terms of like your age and your and your like tech savviness, like um, yeah. Because for for SoundCloud, it's 
it's pretty much very similar to audience in terms that you can just go on there, make your 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 profile and and upload your song. But it's something that for for people who are like much more in like tech and and web three, like they wouldn't see that as as a place they want to be because they see it as something that's kind of like outdated, you know. And then for audios, it's like for someone who might be a little bit older and more old school per se, they might be scared or they they don't even know that that audios exists, you know. So maybe one of the cons of audios is that it is obviously much less known than SoundCloud and much le less mainstream. Um, but then for SoundCloud, the one of the cons might be like people might think it's a bit outdated, so they they don't want to like release there because they don't see the value of of releasing um, on SoundCloud. Of course, SoundCloud is is a much bigger platform because it's 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 been here for long, um, and and it's definitely like well established. But they're they're not trying to get into Web three at all. They're not trying to innovate. Well, Arius uh, is. So it's just basically, it's not like pros and cons, but maybe like where you are. And like, if you see yourself like trying to get into Web3, you most likely would like want to upload to audience because it also has the community aspect. You know, SoundCloud doesn't have a Discord where you can like connect to the, the members. They don't have um, like a token like web, like like audience does. So so it's more of like where you see yourself um, as an artist. Like if you, if you want to like, just stay in Web2 and, and do you know, like the SoundCloud. Yeah. Wait, by the way, I don't think there's anything SoundCloud. <laughs> I, I, I definitely do not. I just, I'm, I'm thinking as a like Web3 perspective person. Yeah, no like, for instance, for me, I, I have not uploaded my music to SoundCloud or anything. Yeah, I also want to add like maybe SoundCloud is a little bit more saturated just because there's so many different people launching on that platform and because you can't really... I mean, artists can share themselves, but they don't have a tight knit community such as like audience exactly. or sound dot X Y Z and so on. Um, and I also want to highlight the fact that you're actually able to earn on audience in comparison to SoundCloud because I don't think artists on that platform are able to earn any type of revenue. Maybe ad revenue. Nope. I'm not exactly sure, but that's that's all I know from uh, SoundCloud. No, totally. And then I think just the community aspect is huge. Because like you said, like SoundCloud is super saturated. And, like how do you stand out on SoundCloud? Like you would have to have a huge like web two following or something and just be like, Hey guys, I released my song on SoundCloud, go listen to it. Well, on audios first it's much less saturated and there's just so much opportunity to connect with people, new people in the Discord, on Twitter, through like those contexts, even Reddit because they have a, a, a very active um Reddit uh thread. So even on Reddit, you know, like there's so many different avenues to which you can uh, connect with people and, and, and promote your music, put it out there that, that maybe SoundCloud doesn't have unless you like do either paid ads or, or yeah, you have a huge Web2 following that is going to go check out your, <laughs> your SoundCloud music. No, you're totally correct on that. Um, I kind of want to segue towards kind of like music NFT. So NFT for digital artists artists has been like pretty huge. So like we have like Bit people. I mean, he sold his NFT for like what like I think seventy million or seven hundred million or something like that. But um, I don't think it has the scene. Seventy, yeah, yeah, seventy million. Sixty nine to be exact. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, but I don't think there has been the same adoption for musicians just yet for NFTs. So do you think like do you see the same thing where music musician like music for uh nfts for musician hasn't seen the same adoption yet, as yet and like why do you think there hasn't been that same growth so kind of a two-part question yes so to answer your first question um i think like what is missing is kind of like a breakthrough artist that that's Web3 native, that is going to make so much noise in Web3 that is going to carry over to Web2. And that's going to cause a lot of like people from Web2 to come into Web3 and start like mass adopting it. Because I like right now, it's so early, like it's so new 
that that it's there's like it's not enough for it to become like there's not enough people on the web3 for it to become mainstream you know especially because i think it's so hard to grasp for someone who is used to being able to stream any song they want for free on on like spotify on soundcloud on youtube you know just play a song and and for them if you go and tell them they're gonna have to buy this song for 20 30 there's some even that are selling for 50 dollars like for them they probably like what like one song for 50 well i can just like go and listen to so many but they don't understand that is there's so much behind it like we don't maybe not even call them like music nfts but more like a access pass or something just it's it's more like a an an access to the artist to to the to the person that you you you're supporting you know so it's more of like trying to to educate more people so that there can be this this mass adoption yeah i really like I, the, I really like the answer that you gave for the first part where it's going to be really cool once there's a web3 artist making it really big on the i guess you could say web2 world um sorry rob i kind of cut you off over there but no you you kind of articulated i i love that and it's it's kind of like this concept that we talk about we actually had a, a post in the goss streams today about web 2.5 it, it's gonna be um, <laughs> it's gonna be i'm saying it like i know but i think what we're all talking about is someone using the the presence and the tools of, of web 2 and they're following that they build on social media along with the web 3 technology like an nft to to, to really pop um, exactly, definitely. I, I definitely see that that happening, you know? And uh, yeah, I, I, I couldn't agree more. Like, you know, Justin Bieber was discovered on YouTube and nobody was really trying to make it on YouTube until Justin Bieber came out, right? And was on MTV. So exactly. you have to forget? go forward to, to make it, to go backwards sometimes, right? Yeah, we forget, but there's always... There has to be like that one person who just makes it so big that it's hard to ignore. You know, like right now, there's not that artist in Web3 that that is just so hard to ignore, like trying to make it in Web3. And I don't know, there's there's something missing there, but it has to happen. <laughs> and that's when I, I think it's going to get like the eyeballs and, and people are going to start um, start like kind of, coming in in ways obviously but yeah i definitely think we need to onboard more web to people educate them that it's more than just paying for a, for a song you know it's it's more like being a part of of a community yeah you're absolutely right and i guess we just have to remind everyone that like nfts right now are pretty new i don't think uh i believe what Maybe it was like two, three years ago where it really started ramping up. And now we have music NFTs and there's like movie NFTs and all that kind of stuff. So it's really, we're just really starting out at, the, at this point, to be honest. And this Fairly. actually, yeah, and this actually brings me to a uh, really good, um, brings me to your NFT, Ashley. Can you kind of talk about Broken NFT and I believe it's called Breakthrough NFTs? Yes. <laughs> okay, so that my project. Yes. Yeah, yeah, shameless plug right here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so yeah, so the concept is the project as a whole is called Breakthrough and and it consists of my first three uh songs that I that I wrote and and put out and it's going to be released in in batches. So the first one that is going to be out is going to be Broken, which was the first song I ever produced. And so the concept behind this whole project is, and the reason why it is called Breakthrough is because for me, music was my breakthrough. Um, as I mentioned, obviously, this is going to be revealed more in throughout like the, the process of the project and everything, but I was going through very um, kind of hard time in my life, physically and, and, and mentally. And... I found that as I reconnected to music and started writing and making songs, I started healing and, and then a lot of things in my life started to kind of fall back into place. 
and and like right now i think that i'm like at the best point i've been in a long time in terms of my health and so that was kind of like the reason i decided to call it breakthrough you know because like my my songs and my process have been kind of positively correlated with my health and yeah that's a really good title by the way (laughs) thank you and then so yeah so the concept is that I'm going to be releasing, yeah, this this song and it's going to be as an NFT. It's going to have some unlockable content that is only available to holders where I'll be like kind of uh, explaining the whole story, like the real, real story. And and obviously there's going to be also utility in terms of like we're going to have some uh, giveaways and and access to to merch and stuff and, and obviously to my future drops. So that's kind of the the bare bones or like overview concept of broken but if if anyone wants to like learn more about it there is obviously the website where you can see the video of me explaining it and and kind of like also the written part of of what what all of this um is about and are you launching this on OpenSea, or is it is there like a different platform just for this i am launching it on on open so I, as I think uh, Rob mentioned it at the beginning of the of the episode, I am I partnered with this academy that is called Nifty Music Academy, yes. and they are kind of like this uh, community that has helped artists launch their their NFTs. I don't know if you're f- familiar with Violetta uh, Cironi. She's a, like a very no. well known artist. <laughs> no, I'm a, sorry. No, 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 don't worry. She's, but she's one of like the, the most uh, well-known artists in, in, web, in Web3. If you guys want to check her out, she's super, super cool. She has minted out several collections already. She's definitely a, a very cool, cool artist. And also Josh Savage. So both of these artists are, were kind of uh, born in Nifty Music Academy. And so I joined their, their program recently. And, and so they, they've been helping me out. But they don't have a platform per se. They're just like this kind of support group and team that, that helps you and, and kind of keeps you accountable <laughs> for everything. And and the launch is on OpenSea. So it is like directly on, on OpenSea. But it's going to be November 1st. So like a week oh. and a day from today. Oh, November. So a week and a day today. Oh, yeah. That, that mm-hmm. is true. <laughs> I, I forgot how, how That's quick uh, November and I, is. I know Gary be. was nice enough to... to put uh, your links in the stage board there. Oh, thank you. Thanks, Gary. So definitely Shout check out. it out, guys. Yeah, um, and if anyone has any questions or anything, feel free uh, to reach out. My my DMs are always open, and, and I'm super happy to talk music or, or anything. So, yeah. It, it's so exciting to hear that, like, this is going to be, not to kind of belabor this point, uh, which you art- articulated wonderfully over and over, but just... I think the people that are fostering community and really educating their community and providing value for the community, like those are the artists that are, are truly going to win. So it's it's not it's more than just kind of putting out songs and kind of forgetting about it and saying people buy my song. Um, you know, it, it's you know if, if the whole community of artists is is this caring about their community, it's going to be a really exciting time to to be in this space. So. You know, definitely can't thank and I you think enough that also, for spreading that message no thank you and i genuinely believe it because for me like growing up one of the things that like music has always been as i said like such a huge part of me and i've always experienced music so deeply that like my biggest dream as a little girl was was to be able to tell the artist like how much a song meant to me or like just be able to to connect with people who who experience music the same way as I, because no, not everyone experiences music the same. And, and music is not like such, like such an important part of everyone's life. You know, there's people who are okay and like music, but there's people who really like music is huge. And so growing up, not everyone around me was listening to the same type of music, especially because I live in a Spanish speaking country and I used to listen to a lot of um, music in English. And so I would always like, dream of having like someone to connect to to tell them how much a song meant to me to like just be able to experience all of my feelings 
as a, as a group. And I think that this is what Web3 does, you know, like just be able to, to connect, as I said, to other people who, who are vibing with the music, who connect with the music, with the artist. And that's so cool. And, and, and the, the better part is that there's like any niche, you know, like you can find it for people who enjoy hip hop, for people who enjoy rock, pop, um, classical music, you know, there's like, there's so many communities that can be um, made from, from this. So it's like, you can't find yours. Um, uh, totally amazing. Uh, I'm, I'm really, it, you know, there's certain aspects of web three that are super cool. And then there's others that are like really exciting. And this, this music one is, is super exciting for me because I, I just know how long it's been, it, the road has been for artists to, to not properly get their stuff out there and then get properly compensated um, if and when they do. So this is awesome. Quick question about audience. I know you said you collabed with someone. Is that, did I hear that right earlier? Yes, yes, I did. So is there an infrastructure within that platform that you can uh, share the, the, the native coin or the, the royalty? Or do you have to have like a joint account, like a band account? instead of having four different accounts for artists and have the royalty split up. Do you know if that exists there? So, so right now you don't get paid royalties in terms of like streaming. It's more of like, I believe it's like the top tips. artists. Yeah. The tips or like every week, the top songs get like the, the artist that, that uploaded it gets, gets the, um, the coins. But, I did, I did actually tell them this um, kind of this e tip or, or like this feedback, not tip. <laughs> I told them this feedback because right now they do not have that, that aspect where you can like upload a song and tag another artist. Like if I, if I have this song like featuring someone, I can only mention them in the title but there's no way to like tag them and link their profile. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, absolutely. No way... That's, that's exactly what I was thinking. Exactly. So they don't have that because I, I, I found out about that because I, I, as I said, I collabed with this artist um, from in betweeners. We released the song on Spotify, which we were able to like tag each other's profiles. But when I went to upload it to my, my profile on audios, I, I, even told him like, Hey, make your audience profile. And when I went to tag him, like there was no way. And so I was like, damn. So I, I literally, I emailed them and, and they said that they're working on, on that. Like they're, they're obviously always trying to upgrade their features and, and, and improving the platform. So I think it is coming and it's long overdue, but they do not have that. Or they also do not have like, I cannot put like my both wallets on a song so that if we get, for instance, top top song that week or, or on get placed on a playlist or something, there's no way to split, like, you know, the money that w we would earn from that. I would have to manually send it to him, which there's yeah. nothing wrong with that, but it would just be more easy, like easier. That's just part of being early. Yeah. <laughs> it is. Uh, That's Alex, <laughs> Alex, did we, I don't, did we have any questions on your end? I'm looking at the list I now. I think that's it for now. Uh, I think we're one hour, just oh, just over an hour into the uh, recording. Um, so, Rob, I guess you can just take it away or give well, some first, closing stuff. Yeah, and thank you, Alex. And thank you guys uh, in the audience, as always, for, for showing up and, um, you know, asking your questions and just being there and supporting us. Um, you know, that's that's what it's about as, as we've, mentioned a lot throughout this conversation is the community being there. So we thank you, Goshens. Um, and Losi, you know, we, we played a lot of DM tag, and I, I'm so thankful that we were able to uh, land a date. And thank you again for being the, uh, the only one singled out in this panel. Um, we, I hope we didn't put you through the ringer too bad. But uh, we definitely have your stuff linked up and going to... To support you along the way. Um, really excited to watch you on your journey and just thank you for being here tonight. No, thank you, Rob, and thank you, Alex, uh, for having me here. Really, really enjoyed um, talking about music and, and Web3 and NFTs. And, and as I said, like, if you guys ever want to reach out or, or anything, um, I'm here. Shout out and thank you to everyone in the audience for, for listening and, and sticking around. And 
And yeah, hope everyone has a great rest of their their Monday, right? Monday afternoon. <laughs> Happy Monday. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks so much, Losi. Best of luck. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Yeah. And just bye, to bye. end this chat off, we're going to oh, yeah? actually play. No, uh, yeah, you can head up, but we're going to play your song. Uh, uh, we usually oh, have like oh, no, ending, yeah. ending Ooh, music go. for the uh, AMAs in the Fireside chat. So yeah, we're just going to try to play it off right here to see if it works. Hopefully, there we go. This is uh, Broken by Losi. So give it up, give it up for Losi. That's awesome. I love it. Yeah. I'm vibing over here. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, we'll definitely have this up on the channel somewhere later on. But again, everyone, uh, thanks for being here, and we'll see you guys next time. We'll see you on Twitter next you guys. week, guys. Yes. All right, take Bye. Care, everyone.